So I felt like turning Portugal into an empire, but I also felt like a little bit of role play. If I was going to take out Spain later on, it probably wouldn't have looked the most appealing full annexing it. So they were going to be divided in a roleplay-ish way. But first, we had to focus on Brazil. Obviously, I was going to go for the best path, the one where you get cores on them. And so off I went. I rushed the unification with Brazil because otherwise your stability will be awful for the rest of the game. And it served as an industrial focus anyways as I was getting cores on all of their states. Brazil was a chunky nation industry-wise compared to me. Aiding and abetting the true Brazil during the Civil War, I went alongside them. And gained true battleships and a royalist Brazil in South America. Little war, big W. And after it, I began the unification focus. The Brazilians accepted it, as they should have, because the Kingdom of Portugal and Brazil was going to be the world power soon enough. Just two years after unification, we had over a hundred factories, but we were running out of room for them. Now was the time to get an operation into Spain. You see, we had claims on the Spanish Southwest, I'm not sure about what the history is there, but history is just a tool for nations to justify their actions. First, we needed to set up a collaboration government so they wouldn't rise up after I subjugated them. This was going to take over a year to do, so meanwhile, we set up our submarine fleet and kept expanding our industry as much as we could. We had 20 free train divisions, but only 20 free planes. Basically, we had no air, so it wasn't going to be a lightning campaign. At first, we pushed in the north, reaching a supply hub. While on our Atlantic front, we had to shut down all imports and exports to the rest of the world, which did form a part of our economy before, but as we went to war with the Spanish, our trade with democratic nations ended. It would be like that for a while. Our first encirclement was executed near Sevilla, and it would be a sign of things to come, as our strategy would be to surround the oblivious Spanish wherever we could. It was going to take a little bit of work to get some good catches. Some land in the northwest was taken, while in the south we headed into an operation and managed to get two nice catches, as we encircled La Coruña and destroyed the pocket once again. And for our last two surround and destroy operations, we headed into León, and shortly Oviedo after. These W's would be the straw that broke the espalda de Camello, and we reached Madrid very fast after that. The Spanish capitulated, we took their navy and annexed them. However, the occupation wouldn't last long as Navarra or Basque country was released. Catalonia after, Spain eventually. The colors of Iberia changed to a sweet tint of blue, and the Portuguese goals still not having been fully accomplished yet. The Basque country, they were a dominion under us, and we had an obligation to return their northern core territory if we ever took it in a war. We had a great reason to invade Germany, as they were holding that territory, and we knew they were on the losing side of history. We began justifying, a lot sooner than expected. With a weak Germany holding France and a low popularity of Benito Mussolini leading Italy, a Latin Union of sorts was becoming a very real possibility. But for now, we were hoping to declare war on the Axis and join the Allies, and go from there. I was going to be at war with Japan too if I declared, so of course I sent my units to hold my Asian assets. With that done, the United Kingdom of Portugal and Brazil, alongside all Iberian states, joined World War II. I was invited into the Allies and began liberating French territory in Africa. But this was our land, not French. We took it, and this action caused us to be kicked from the Allies as we were not cooperating with them. But now we were under no obligation to do anything for the Allied powers. We declared the Latin Union, occupied Southwest France for ourselves, and just kept on moving. Vichy France had plentiful steel, something the Portuguese state very much needed as we had very little of that resource. It became a race against the Allies for us to liberate as much Latin land as possible. The dynamic was very interesting. It was kind of like how the Soviet Union raced to liberate the workers of Europe in the East while Portugal was racing to liberate the Latin peoples in the south. Sadly, mainland Italy was lost to the Allied powers, and we only got southern France, Corsica, and Sardinia. With the Western Front going cold, we landed in Greece, in order for us to hopefully reach Romania, the only Latin nation in the Balkans. But we were met with a horde of Axis units and couldn't do much, while Turkey had joined the Allies and was where the Balkan Liberation Project was being spearheaded from. But holding Greece was great as it would expand our reach to the Eastern Mediterranean. The Axis capitulated, and the peace deal went into motion. This is what Europe looked like now. Greece was still a thing, but I was still occupying them. No one was going to stop me or tell me what to do. I held half a France too. I had no obligation to give them their land back. It's mine now. We still had Japan to take out, but the Allied powers would do that for us pretty quickly after. We didn't get anything from this peace deal except for friendly, non-aligned Republic of China. They had just been kicked out of the Allies for proclaiming the One China policy that now began a massive civil war. 
The PRC had joined the Comintern, and then China was at war with the entire Soviet Union. A communist mainland China would be our worst nightmare, it would mean a big ally being wiped out and our colonies in China being in danger. Thankfully, we could wipe out the Chinese warlords by capitulating Guangxi, the only major. And then the ROC would have a much easier time with the Comintern. As our volunteers arrived at the front line, we began pushing and severed East Guangxi. Pushing deeper into the south, our goal would be to occupy all of the major cities in Guangxi. As we took the capital city, the everywhere front was over for China. And now they could just focus on the north. The PRC capital city was occupied, but they still existed in Manchuria. And would actually land not so soon after onto the east coast. Our volunteers could do nothing but watch as they weren't equipped to fight such a war. It wasn't looking good. So we began justifying on communist China soon enough declared war, granting temporary membership in the Latin Union to China. If we could push the Comintern forces out of China proper, we could force a peace deal. And so from Portuguese Macau, we encircled a massive swath of PRC and Soviet forces. Meanwhile at home, the Soviets and their allies were raiding our convoys, so it was imperative we entered this war fast. And the Soviets would deliver us this, as they declared war on an allied nation and now we're about to meet the full wrath of western democracy. With combined land and marine operations, we had very many successful surround and destroy operations. We reached Manchuria pretty quickly and capitulated the PRC government. Well, we most definitely couldn't take Xinjiang, the last Chinese warlord. We could invade the Soviet Far East and twist the Soviet arms into it. This eastern offensive went fantastic, and the killing punch would be the paradropping operation into the last eastern supply hub. The Soviet army here couldn't fight anymore. A peace treaty was signed. Now in our new dominant position on the world stage, I didn't really feel like fighting the Allies head on. I felt like it was a lot more wiser to get the Portuguese GDP to number one in the world instead. But we were running out of building slots to keep our GDP growing. And the only nation that wasn't in any faction and had a lot of building slots was China. It was time for them to be under some new management. Of course, we had a collaboration government ready and we descended upon the Chinese. Our paratrooping operations would be a game changer in this war. Driving into any supply hub and suffocating the Chinese troops who had no supply. As the west coast was taken, we just had to head west, where eventually it was too much to bear for the Chinese government. The great China was ours, and our GDP went from fourth to third place. Only Russia and the US were in our way now. Um, not that great of an improvement. And the former were making moves in the Baltic and Finland, eventually puppeting them. We made moves too, annexing Madagascar, Vietnam, and Ethiopia, but it still wasn't enough to reach number one, or even get close to it. So we had to take the ultimate measure, taking out the Russian Federation. The only place we could attack from was the east, and so a long, grueling logistics war would have to happen. Thank God we had paratroopers. These guys had shown their usefulness during the Chinese campaign. Now they were going to be absolutely pivotal in the Russian campaign. Taking out our first supply hub behind enemy lines, we saw it fit to begin pushing. We reached this far until supply became an issue again, and then decided to launch our most daring operation yet into the coast of Baikal. Getting those paratroopers connected to the main front line was going to be very important, but it was hard as our divisions had low supply, and time was running out quick as the paratroopers were being assaulted from all angles by a horde of Russians. The only saving grace being their lack of supply because we held it. Eventually, a land connection was made. The paradrop operation was a success. It kept on going like this for months going into the Russian Federation. A slow, controlled burn of our enemy, while the Allied powers in the West were just nuking Russia over and over again. Eventually, we in the East arrived at our first dual supply hub state. It was the Urals, the industrial heart of the Soviets. And with it being occupied, it was just too much to bear for the Russian state. This is what the world looked like after the Treaty of Minsk. And we, we were number one GDP. At last. I remember how I wanted this to be an RP game, but admittedly, the pursuit of number one GDP in the world did blind me. I even forgot about the Latin Union, which we couldn't do because I, I wasn't going to go against the Allies. So, our journey would end here. Thank you, and have a nice day or night.